In this video, we're going to check crankshaft runout. Now, crankshaft runout will allow us to determine whether or not this crankshaft is actually bent or bowed slightly in the middle. Now, the reason a crankshaft might become bowed or, or bent in the middle is just due to the numerous heat cycles that an engine will go through during its normal service life. Uh, we also have to realize that there are a lot of torsional or twisting motions that happen through the crankshaft as it rotates. As each individual cylinder receives a power stroke, it's going to twist the crankshaft slightly. So all of this will add up and will eventually lead to the crankshaft uh, bending or bowing slightly in the middle. Now the tool that we're going to use to check for this is a dial indicator. We'll mount that up in a second. And to check for crank runout, we're going to support the crankshaft on the front and rear main bearing journals here. Now normally we would sit the crankshaft into a set of V-blocks and we would support the crankshaft that way. And then with our dial indicator, we would measure one of these center main bearing journals here and watch for run out. But because we don't have a set of V-blocks here today, what we're actually going to do is use the cylinder block itself. So we can see that the cylinder block is flipped upside down here. And that gives us a good look at the main saddle. And in the main saddle, of course, we have all of our main bearings these split bearing shells themselves here. And these are going to take the place of our V-blocks. So we'll support the crankshaft using this front and rear main bearing shell. And we're going to remove the center two so that if the crankshaft does have any bend in it, it'll be allowed to walk up and down. So let's remove these now and set them off to the side. And then we'll lay the crankshaft in the main saddle. So with the crankshaft now supported at the front and the rear, we'll be free to mount up our dial indicator to check for run out here in the middle. Now we're going to pick one of these two main bearing journals because we don't actually have one that's in the center. We have a total of four. So here's one, two, three, and then at the back, here's our fourth one, which means there is no true center. So we're just going to pick one of these and we're going to mount our dial indicator so that we can measure for run out there. This is a three cylinder engine, which means that we've only got four main bearings here. If we had a four cylinder engine or a V8 or even a V6 or something like that, we might have an odd number of main bearing journals, which would allow us a true center to actually measure on, but we'll just have to make do with this one here. And again, we'll pick one of these two as the journals that we'll measure for run out at. So I'm going to set up the dial indicator right now. And as we spin the crankshaft, we'll be able to check for run out. All right, with our dial indicator mounted and in its proper position, we can go ahead and turn this crankshaft to inspect for any run out. Now, the main journal that I've chosen is the second one in from the front. And we can see that the dial indicator is contacting the journal surface here. We need to be careful that the dial indicator isn't in the way of the oil hole on this main journal. Otherwise, that dial indicator could drop down in there and throw off our reading. So we need to offset it from the center of that journal slightly. And we also need to turn the face of our dial indicator so that the dial or the needle is lined up at zero. So with it lined up at zero, we can go ahead and turn the crankshaft. And as we turn, we're looking for any movement of that dial from that zero mark, which is going to indicate run out. So we go through one complete rotation or one complete revolution of the crankshaft, which we have just done there. And I did not see any deflection whatsoever, indicating that this crankshaft is perfectly straight. So that means we can go ahead and reuse it. We don't have to replace it. We don't have to send it to a machine shop to be straightened. Now, if we did see any bend or if we did see deflection, we would see that dial move off zero and then return. So it would go up 
and down and then eventually return back to our zero mark. But because we didn't see anything with this one, we can go ahead and use this crank as is.